Welcome to Quick Flex. Today we're going to be looking over a 2017 movie called Three Billboards, a murder mystery that keeps you at the edge of your seat throughout the entire film. A look in the area outside the town of Ebbing in Missouri on a gloomy foggy day, with three old and vacant billboards emerging from the fog on the Downwater Road. Mildred Hayes is driving towards Ebbing, stopping outside the three billboards with great interest, obviously depressed. Mildred pays a visit to a local inconspicuous advertisement company, where she speaks to Red Welby. Welby is in charge of renting billboards in Ebbing, and Mildred asks to rent them for an entire year. Welby is surprised by her offer, as no one has rented the billboard since 1986. Nobody ever passes by Downwater Road unless they're lost. Mildred is observing an overturned beetle, crawling on its back helpless. After she hands out $5,000 to Welby, along with the note about what billboard should say, after reading the note, Welby changes his posture. As he realizes that Mildred is Angela Hayes' mother, Mildred helps the beetle, confirming Welby's presumption with sadness in her voice. Angela was raped and murdered only seven months ago. The two make a deal to set up the billboards by Easter Sunday. The scene switches to Officer Jason Dixon, who is driving by the Downwater Road when he sees two men as they are putting up the billboards that Mildred commissioned. He is stunned by the message that reads, How come, Chief Willoughby? He stops by the first billboard to see the three, and approaches the young men with a lot of what's on both sides and a lot of unanswered questions. A young African-American Jerome does not want to cooperate with Dixon when asked about the billboards. As Officer Dixon drives off, he can't miss seeing the remaining two billboards saying, and still no arrests, and raped while dying. Baffled, Officer Dixon calls Chief Bill Willoughby, interrupting Chief's Easter dinner with his family. Chief Willoughby is seated at the dinner table, dining with his wife Anne, who is not happy with her husband answering the phone, and his two daughters, Holly and Jane. Officer Dixon tells the chief about the billboards. Mildred is driving by the Downwater Road with an ambiguous expression of achievement and sorrow, driving her son Robbie to school. Robbie seems to be very upset with his mother's initiative. Mildred meets with Denise, a friend who seems to know everything about Mildred's plan to meddle with Ebbing police. The police pay a visit to Red Welby, with Officer Cedric angered with the Reds and Mildred's business deal. Welby dismisses the officer, openly disrespectful towards him. Chief Willoughby takes over the situation, questioning Welby and pressing him to admit that Mildred was the one who commissioned the billboards. It soon becomes obvious that some officers like Dixon are abusing their power and using excessive force to get the information they want, so Dixon attacks Welby, demanding him to take down the billboards. Mildred appears on the news to explain what motivated her to put up the billboards, and sharing that the police is doing anything else rather than fighting crime, which includes harassing people and attacking African Americans for no good reason. She calls out Willoughby directly on live television, and the three billboards soon become a subject of interest in the entire town. Willoughby visits Mildred, but the two don't manage to settle their differences. Chief admits that he's got cancer and that he's dying, but Mildred replies that she knew and that this is partly the reason why she commissioned the billboards, to have him solve the crime before he dies. Dixon is not giving up on convincing Red to take the billboards down, playing both good and bad cop on him. Mildred appears and gets Welby off the hook. A local car dealer, James, stands up for Mildred and compliments her appearance on TV. Father Montgomery is waiting for Mildred with Robbie and tells her that her son is having problems because of the billboards. He ensures her that she has everyone's support about Angela, but not with billboards. Mildred calls out Father Montgomery, comparing the church with gangs, and holding him culpable for not reacting to the fact that Ebbing Police is doing nothing to find out who murdered and raped her daughter. Willoughby is fighting cancer and is reflecting on the situation, which is when he decides that he can't waste any time. He goes to the station and asks for the Hayes case, while Dixon tries to convince Chief Willoughby to let go of the case and focus on putting down the billboards, but with no success. Willoughby is by the downwater road with Dixon, looking for clues as to what happened to Angela Hayes. Mildred goes for an intervention to a dentist, who is one of the two people complaining about the billboards. The visit to the dentist ends up with Mildred drilling a hole through the dentist's thumbnail, after which Willoughby comes to Mildred, arrests her, and takes her to the station. After a salve of reproaches between Dixon and Mildred, Mildred is left with Willoughby for questioning. Mildred refuses to admit to drilling a hole into the dentist's thumbnail. Willoughby presses Mildred and tries to intimidate her with the court if she doesn't take down the billboards. Willoughby cuffs up blood on Mildred, apologizing, which mellows down Mildred. She gets help, and Willoughby is being taken to the hospital. Robbie is upset with his sister's death, 
and is constantly criticizing his mother's decision to put up the billboards, which are only making him feel even worse. Mildred suffers as she misses her daughter, remembering the last day she saw her. The flashback reveals a problematic mother-daughter relationship and a dysfunctional family. The flashback ends with mother and daughter yelling at each other and Angela leaving after saying that she hopes that she gets raped on the way and Mildred agreeing with her. Mildred's ex-husband Charlie pays her a visit with his younger girlfriend Penelope. While Mildred is trying to reconnect with her son, Charlie confronts Mildred about the billboards, unhappy with her actions. After Mildred provokes Charlie, he attacks her and Robbie attacks his father, which is when Penelope walks in on them and unintentionally settles the situation down. Charlie reveals to Mildred that Angela wanted to come and live with him and that Robbie knew that all along. Mildred does not believe him and Robbie claims that he doesn't know. Dixon is plotting how to solve the problem with billboards when his mother suggests that he should go after Mildred's friends, which is when he arrests Denise for possession. Mildred storms into the station and confronts Dixon, while Willoughby is on an outing with his daughters and teaching them how to fish. As Mildred is arranging flower beds by the billboards, she has a breathtaking close encounter with a doe, which breaks her down. In the meantime, Welby is trying to get out of the contract with Mildred, claiming that she's behind with her payments. His secretary Pam gives Mildred an envelope with an anonymous donation, with enough money to keep the billboards up. Willoughby is enjoying the time with his family and makes love with his wife before he shoots himself in the head after everyone falls asleep. Willoughby even left a suicide note, explaining that he didn't want his family to witness his slow and painful death. However, Ebbing is blaming Mildred and her billboards, as Willoughby's suicide is mentioned on TV. Dixon is so upset with Willoughby's death that he attacks Welby and his secretary, with his new chief Abercrombie witnessing the scene. After insulting Abercrombie at the station, Dixon gets fired. Mildred receives an eerie visit at work from a stranger, who tries to scare Mildred by breaking one of the figures on sale and talking about how he might be the one who raped and killed her daughter. He leaves, as Anne walks into the store, to reproach Mildred for her husband's death, handing her a note that Willoughby left for Mildred. Willoughby wishes good luck to Mildred in the note, praising her idea for putting up the billboards, and admits that he was the one who anonymously paid for keeping up the billboards. As Mildred drives by the Downwater Road with Robbie, they see that the billboards are burning. They extinguish the fire, but the messages are destroyed. Chief Abercrombie arrives at the scene with an ambulance, wanting to ask Mildred a couple of questions. She refuses and leaves. Dixon is called to come to the station by Cedric to get the note that was left for him by Willoughby. The note states that Willoughby knew that Dixon wanted to become a detective, but that he would need to be more compassionate to do so. In the meantime, wanting payback and thinking that Dixon is responsible for putting billboards on fire, Mildred hides in the ad agency across the station and starts launching Molotov cocktails at the police station with no one but Dixon inside, as he is reading a letter from Willoughby. As the station catches fire, Dixon gets severely burned while having a change of heart and wanting to save Angela Hayes' file from the fire. Mildred observes as James appears, helping Dixon. Amber Crombie arrives at the scene as the morning is creeping in, questioning James and Mildred. James lies about not knowing who did it. Mildred and James tell Chief, on James' initiative, that they were getting back from a date when they saw the building burning with Dixon jumping out of the window. As Chief leaves, James asks Mildred out for a dinner, and she agrees. Dixon is all wrapped in bandages with severe burns, placed in the same hospital room as Welby, who suffers from amnesia and can't remember Dixon who is trying to apologize to him for throwing him out of the window. One of the young men who put up the billboards, Jerome, visits Mildred to give her the duplicate messages for billboards. James, Robbie, Denise and Jerome help Mildred put up the billboard messages. As Mildred is on a date with James, Dixon is drinking his sadness away alone in a bar, when he overhears a conversation between two men sitting in a booth behind him. The same man who came to Mildred's work and tried to intimidate her is telling another man about a girl he slept with, while a couple of his friends watched. Dixon leaves the bar and lights a cigarette outside, while his true intention is to memorize the car place outside the bar. As Dixon returns to his seat at the bar, the man realizes that Dixon could have heard his entire story and decides to provoke him and make him leave. Instead, Dixon seats with the two men. Dixon tricks the man so he could scratch him and get his DNA, which sparks a fight as the man is punching drunken Dixon. As the man finds out that Dixon is a cop, the two men flee the bar and drive off. Charlie crashes Mildred's date and leaves his girlfriend waiting for him at the table while James is in the bathroom. James returns as Charlie says he's sorry for the billboards, but offends both James and Mildred as he's leaving. 
James leaves, hurt, and approaches Penelope's and Charlie's table and tells intimidated Charlie to take good care of Penelope. Dixon saves the DNA he got from scratching the men at the bar and takes it to the police. He goes over to Mildred to let her know about the DNA and what happened at the bar. Mildred thanks Dixon, seeing that he had a change of heart. Abercrombie praises Dixon for the DNA job, but tells him that they don't have their guy and that the DNA does not match the sample from the crime scene. The suspect was outside the country and had a firm alibi at the time of Angela's death. After getting back home, Dixon tries to kill himself by placing a shotgun in his mouth, but gives up and calls Mildred. He tells her that they didn't catch Angela's killer, and Mildred breaks down. Still convinced that the man is a rapist, although not the one they're looking for, Dixon and Mildred decide to find the man in Idaho by tracing the license plates that Dixon memorized. Mildred admits that she burned down the station, and Dixon casually but indirectly tells her that he knew. As they drive off towards Idaho, they are reconsidering their decision to kill the rapist, with an atmosphere of peculiar but serene silence. 